Well, to talk more about the fight for the unlimited right to bear arms, Stephen Crowder, Fox News contributor, joins us now. Welcome to the show, Stephen. So it seems like people that are pro-gun so passionate believe that so passionately believe that it's one of our most fundamental rights up there with freedom of speech and religion. Why is that? Be, well, be, do you mean why, why is it found in the Constitution? Why do people believe what the Constitution has told them as far as their rights? I'm a little confused with the question because you have to understand I do come from a place like Canada where free speech doesn't exist. So I'm a huge advocate of free speech uh, where a lot of countries aren't. Uh, and I'm a huge advocate of, of people who are uh, uh, law obeying citizens to be able to uh, own and bear arms. I don't, uh, is it, why would there be a problem with that? Well, I mean, why do you see guns as a symbol of freedom? Well, if you look at any, any, and I'm not saying right now, I, I want, it's, it's very important that I don't get taken out of context saying that this is a totalitarian regime, but I'm saying when you look at any totalitarian regime, I'm not saying we've ever had one in the United States or that we ever will, uh, one of their first acts is to disarm the populace. And so when it comes to that, I actually side with Gandhi in believing that uh, the English Empire's uh, blackest act would be robbing a nation of arms. So I'm with Gandhi on this one. But that's exactly why um, the law was written, and you have to kind of take into context that this was a time where people were concerned about that, about fighting against their government. We live in different times right now, so does the same argument apply? Well, we don't live in different times in that the, the threat of, of, of overreaching government is, is still very much existent. And, of course, it's not only about that, but, of course, people's right to bear arms to protect themselves uh, from, from interior threats here in this country. Uh, and I'm not some crazy anarchist or, or, or libertarian who doesn't believe that the, the government fulfills legitimate roles, but let's look at the legitimate roles of government. One would be the military. One would be the police force, because its role, the legitimate purview of government, is to protect its citizens from inside and outside threats. The same thing happens to an American citizen. It is within the legitimate purview of your role as a, a, a uh, protector of the household to protect your family. And, and oftentimes, you look at police response times in the United States, especially in areas where gun ownership is very prevalent in rural areas. Well, if you don't have a gun, you're straight out of luck. Um, I do want to talk about this particular case in Virginia, where people are allowed to buy guns, um, but just one at a time. But now that's been repealed, and now you can buy more than one gun every 30 days. Why do you need to buy 5, 10, 15 guns at once? Well, I can't speak to every individual person who buys more than several guns at once. But let me give you a personal example. Um, my fiancé had bought a gun, uh, a gun that was for home use, a gun that would be far too large to conceal and carry. The next week, encountered a would-be rapist, managed to escape, and went and got her concealed carry permit and a weapon that she could conceal and carry in her purse. So this all occurred within the span of two weeks, where she had bought a gun uh, and, of course, would not be able to use that for the legitimate purpose, which she now needed a gun, so she bought another one. So in that case, I certainly don't think it's the government's role to say, listen, I know you've got a, a would-be rapist who intruded into your house, uh, who we've now tracked in this area of the neighborhood several times. See, you can't take the context in each individual situation. You either believe in the Constitution and apply it wholly to law-abiding citizens, or you don't. But I can't speak to the thousands of people who might buy two or three guns within the span of a month. I don't know their reasons. Okay, but the person, the, the purpose of this is to stop proliferation from people buying mass amounts of weapons and taking them somewhere else and selling them. Um, I mean, if somebody were to buy an arsenal of weapons, and doesn't that raise some sort of red flag? One, by the way, we need to look no further than the Fast and Furious or Gunwalker scandal, where you have people like Eric Holder who have openly said he wants to brainwash the American public into giving up their guns, where they knowingly were allowed guns to cross the border. So again, what, what I think is a more legitimate threat is an overreaching government with a lack of transparency, not a law-abiding citizen who is exercising his right to own a gun. Again, if, if, if someone believes that it's the government's right to say how many guns you can own and tell you why you should own a gun, well, then fine. We just need to rewrite the Constitution. That's okay. That's an argument to have. But uh, again, I can't even begin to try and act as though I would understand why everyone would uh, would need to buy more than one gun in 30 days. I know my fiance did. And uh, if you think that the government would have her have the right to tell her, listen, sorry, face the rapist in the Grand Rapids alley, then fine. That's a discussion we can have. Well, okay. Uh, Stephen, will you see cases like the most recent controversy, this unarmed 17-year-old boy shot dead, um, school shootings, Virginia Tech is just one of many, Gabrielle Giffords, who's now recovering. Um, I mean, in the wake of all these tragedies, is it going to be harder to fight for guns in the, in the, face, in the face of these tragedies? 
Well, no, it'll never be harder to actually, if you're talking about from a political perspective, uh, uh, the gun issue, listen, the reason Fast and Furious is such a scandal, the reason Eric Holder had to lie is because gun control is a losing issue for Democrats in the United States. It is a losing issue, and that's why they want to avoid it. Um, and that's why anytime someone comes up and says, hey, you know, they think Barack Obama wants to take their guns away, they're, they're seen as a loon and seen as a conspiracy theorist. And that may be true or it may be not true, but it's because Barack Obama hasn't really talked about it a lot. Uh, it's a losing issue for Democrats. Most Americans, both Democrats and Republicans, support the ownership of guns. And that's just a fact, especially when you come to blue dog Democrats who would follow lockstep with the Democratic Party, maybe in every other facet, but not with guns. It's a losing issue. Now, I did read this article, Stephen, today um, that people that are really gung ho about guns, part of the reason is that they need them to feel powerful. How do you feel mm. about that? Well, listen, you know, I'm a gun owner. Uh, I have a conceal and carry license. Um, I've never once had to use it. I've never once been in a street fight. That's also probably due to the fact that I make wiser decisions than most young liberals in the sense that I don't go out partying and, and I, I, I don't drink. Um, wow, good for I you. Also am very, uh, pardon? I said good for you. Yeah, I'm just saying, I mean, that's probably a big reason why I've avoided violence. I hate violence. I don't even like violent movies. Anytime a Quentin Tarantino film is on TV, I have to shut it off. It turns my stomach. Uh, that being said, I'm a competitive submission wrestler, very proficient in the arts of fighting because it's a hobby of mine. And uh, I don't think that necessarily exercising your right or being prepared means that you are gung-ho on guns or the fact that I'm prepared to deal with a physical altercation means I'm gung-ho on violence. Most of the people I've seen get into street fights are people who should never even think about uh, uh, dropping the beer bottle in the McDonald's and getting into street fights, yet they're the ones who seem to be the most uh, uh, mo most gung-ho, uh, gung to use your word about it, whereas I'm fully equipped and have never had to use it, and I think it's the same thing with gun owners. All right. How many guns do you own, just out of curiosity there, Stephen? That's not a question I would ever answer, and that's for intruders to find out. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully, um, but I guess the message is that they better stay away from you. Um, thank yeah, you for well, if you look online, uh, I got a couple of fatwas on my head. The second you come out and uh, you speak on some controversial topics, you get some keyboard warriors now who try and incite violence against your family. It's the same with my friend Dana Lash over there at CNN, and uh, you have to be armed. It's sad, but it's a fact of life when you do what All you right, do. All right, I hear you. That, that is a sad fact of life. Um, thanks, Stephen. Thank you for coming on the show. That was Stephen Crowder. He's a Fox News contributor.